So let's talk about another really cool interface in Java. We talked a lot about comparable. Well, we're going to talk about it in Kotlin, but it's a Java interface. So we're looking at the Java. Sorry. Um, so we looked at comparable a lot. There's actually another really neat interface that we can uh, we can use in our Kotlin uh, code and that we can implement. And this one is actually kind of awesome because by doing this, this allows us to participate in a language feature. So in Kotlin, we have this for in loop. And we've used that to iterate through, to iterate through sets and lists and arrays and range expressions and all sorts of things. And it turns out that you can also get to the right side of, of that for in loop. In Java, this is called the for each loop. That's why it's described this way in the Java documentation. But at Kotlin, it's called the for in loop, and it works the same way. So you can get over there. You can participate in this language feature. So this actually allows you to jump into a part of the language that you might have thought like. I don't know, like, I don't, I don't think I belong over there. Like there's lists over there and there's arrays over there and there's sets over there, but, but me, can, I, can my class go over there? And it turns out your class can, right? And this is, you know, again, one of these things where, where we see the power of interfaces, right? Um, the interface expresses, the iterable interface in Java expresses the ability to participate in the right side of the, the, the enhanced for loop or the for in loop in, in Kotlin. Um, and so the only thing we actually really need to do here, when we look at interface descriptions, this one's parametrized. It's parametrized by the types of things that come out of this particular thing. Um, and so what, what the only, and this, this one's a little complicated. This is actually the combination of two different methods, um, two different interfaces, excuse me. So the first one is called iterable. If you implement iterable, you can now be used in a for in loop. Um, Iterable has one method. So you look at the interface description, you see these default methods. These you don't have to provide. These are, these are optional. You can override them if you want, but you don't need to. The only one we have to provide is this method called iterator. And what this does is it returns an iterator. Okay. Now an iterator is something that manages the state of the iteration. Okay. So, so let me try to think, let's think about it this way. So let's say I have an array. Okay. Um, I might want that same array to be used multiple times with the same in the same uh, for in loop, right? So I might have nested for in loops that all go through the elements of, of the array. So there's the array, and then there's something called an iterator that maintains the state of the iteration. You can essentially think of the iterator as, as knowing which item should come next. And it's possible for a single array to have multiple iterators that are being used in parallel, right? Um, for example, or at the same time, right? So for example, if I have a nested loop, if I have a foreign loop that goes through an array and a foreign loop inside of it, both of those are using the same array, but different iterators. And we'll see what happens when we use the same iterator. It gets kind of, it gets pretty weird. Um, but the idea here is that iterable is supposed to return an iterator. Now you might ask what's an iterator, and it turns out the iterator is also another type of interface. And let's look at this one, right? So the idea is I implement iterable, I have this one method I need to implement that returns an iterator. The iterator itself is, has these methods. And again, this one is default and this one is default. And there are really two that we care about. The first one is, what's the next item, right? Think about it. The iterator is supposed to be going through all the items in some collection. And so one of the things it's supposed to be able to do is tell me what's the next item, right? And you'll see that the iterator, uh, this is parameterized in the type of the element that is going to come out. So if I'm using the for in loop in Kotlin, this is how Kotlin infers the type of the loop variable, right? Is, is based on the type of uh, the iterator. So there's two things. One is give me the next element. The other one is, is there a next element, right? Is it empty, right? So has next will return true until I'm finished with the iteration. So imagine I'm going through an array, I get true, 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 I get to the last element, I get, I, I do next, returns me the last element, and then has next is false. And so this is a simple flag that's just being used to make sure that I don't walk off the end of the iterator. But in general, what this does is it gives me the next item. And you can imagine that when I call next, um, this is then going to advance to the next item in the iteration uh, or in, in whatever I'm iterating through, right? This will make a little bit more sense to us once we write some code. Um, but you know, I just you know, I, I love this pair of interfaces because again, it, it really allows us to get in the mix. Right now, we can build our own things that actually uh, somebody can use as part of the for in loop, which is kind of a neat thing to be able to do.